My name's Marjorie Thorpe, Brakalong, Babrulong, Ganai, Japarong, Gunditjmara. I've come up here um, to talk with people nationally about where we go forward after the Uluru Statement and to be part of the conversation that carries us forward. And um, as people know that there are treaty discussions in Victoria, and of course, um, you know, that's the conversation that we're having there. I've come with um, a young woman from our country. We come from uh, East Gipp we live in East Gippsland, Croatangalang country. And Jetta Patton has come up. What we're doing, what she is actually doing during NAIDOC week is organising a treaty walk in Lake Centris, which is a probably as redneck as you can get. But um, we're looking at having that treaty conversation to take the conversation and the information to people in our communities. You know, our followers are just seeing what's going on on radio and TV, and they're hearing one version of it. And what we see is our responsibility is to make sure our people are informed. So this treaty walk is um, an amazing event that's going to happen in our little neck of the woods. So that after that, we're going to have a conversation, conversation so that people can actually sit down and ask the questions. You know, we have our people who are, you know, they, they don't go to cities and go to big meetings and, you know, they want, we want to sit down on country and talk about the business with our future generations, our young people. And so that's, that's why we've come. We've actually also been sponsored by the war mob in Melbourne so that they enabled us to come here. And part of their philosophy is that they have undertaken to sponsor one of their elders to get to, you know, meetings that are important. So I'm very grateful to them young fellas in war who are backing us and, um, and you know, to get here. And so we're carrying the message in, in Victoria. What we're saying there is that um, I'm also have a pledge going back to the, the 2000 Commonwealth Games in Melbourne of the black GST. And that was about the time when they were putting the, the GST through Parliament here. The black GST for us is genocide, sovereignty and treaty. So that's the pledge that us fellows who organised that Commonwealth Games in Melbourne took. So we're continually working on the fact that there's been genocide perpetrated against us ongoing. That we are the sovereign, original people of our country. And yes, we're talking about a treaty. We aren't talking about a government devised treaty. We're talking about an internationally scrutinised sovereign treaty. So if the Victorian state government thinks that, thinks that we're going to take anything less than that, well, it ain't going to happen. And that's coming quite out quite clearly through the treaty consultations, which is pretty much been the same old, same old as the constitutional reform conversations, as dodgy as they can get, misleading information, denigrating people who actually say no to them in their meetings. So, you know, it's the same thing. But we're just saying, and as you can, you know, what we're doing is here is mobilising on the ground and informing our young people and our fellas down there that this is what they're talking about here. Because if they get through with this constitutional reform now, they're changing their language all the time. But if they get through with this report, reform, well, it's all over for us. You know, there won't, there won't be, you know, we'll be just like every other Australian in this country, as far as they're concerned. So forget about your Aboriginal services, because they aren't going to be there. We'll be mainstreamed. We can see that happening now in our Aboriginal organisations, health services, legal services. They're so conformed and constrained by government, by their funding agreements, they can't do nothing. They can barely provide the services that we set them up for. So we need to sack them. And we need to sack our native title rep bodies too. And that's what we've been talking about in Victoria. 
sack these fellas. They have ripped us off. The greedy fellas are in there in these rep bodies, robbing their people. That's what's happening down our way, and it's probably happening in other places too. So we, as the full group, as the traditional owners of our country, we're going to sack these fellas because they've, they, they're selling us out. And so what we want to do is develop that form, you know, like we have done previously, is to come together on that national level with peace amongst ourselves. Because that's what we need. We can't be angry and falling apart and carrying on. We've got to fight on here. And if we're not fit enough to do it, well, go home and get well on your own country and come back here strong and, and back these fellas who are trying to get that, keep that embassy going that we fought. I was a kid in 1972. Well, I was 17 sitting up on them steps when the NBC was set up. And I know the people who were there then, who were sitting under the umbrella. So we need to educate, we need to, we need to tell the stories to our young fellas, because they want to know. They don't want to be told by white fellas in schools our history. We've got to tell them our history. We've got to tell them the history of our struggle, what our old people went through and the genocide and what happened to our people. You know, because that's we're still under the full, full throttle of genocide right now today. And what this constitutional reform is the um, final solution, you fellas. And we come in peace. We want to work together with fellas who think, you know, we, it's not our business what happens in anyone else's country. We're looking after our own people in our own country. So we come with that. We come with peace and we want to sit down and talk and work it out together. So thanks for giving me the chance and thank you to the Ngunnawal people for allowing me to speak on your country. Thank you. We were the majority because no one else pretty much turned up from the rest of Victoria. So we had the majority and we were, we've got a land justice group is, who actually were part of the treaty talks that we were supposed to be having in Victoria. So they've done a lot of work previous to that and they gave us the information and so I was surprised to get this invitation to go to the meeting. And, and so I went along. And so we, so our line was sovereignty. We, we run a sovereignty ticket. We said, well, we're the majority here, so um, this is what we're talking about. And they said, oh, you can't talk about that here. You've got the, was it five themes or something? Every meeting was on the same five themes. And we put the sixth theme was the sovereignty theme. And then, because there was not enough people outside of our sovereignty group to, to go to their other meetings for the other things. So we, so we, what we did then, we, we addressed those same things. We addressed all of those from a sovereignty perspective. So we, because we knew that if what we were going to say, we, and so when the report back came, they tried to cut us out and say, you can't have that sixth theme. We said, what well, we've actually, Answered the uh, addressed all of those other themes from this this group. There was one little there, there were a few fellas there who were from you know who went to another workshop upstairs, and um, and most of them were the facilitators. But Robbie Robbie thought my brother he went to that meeting. He, he went upstairs to their workshop because we didn't need him in ours. <laughs> We had enough, you know, so him and Mariki went upstairs to the, sovereign, to the other workshop and they had them, they actually educated them fellas anyway. And so when we come back to do the vote, um, we had the numbers for the vote too, as it turned out. So we elected our, was it 10 people? We elected our 10 people and, and we, um, You know, we were saying, you know, us older people were saying, if we could have handpicked those 10 people to go and rep represent us, we couldn't have picked the better 10 to go and push the line of no from Victoria. Because across the board at every regional meeting, it was no, 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 straight out. And so the people who actually chaired that was the chairperson of the Federation, which is the Federation of all the native title groups in Victoria. So he was the the chair facilitator 
and the woman was, uh, and his name was Jeremy Clark, and the woman was, who was the other chair was um, Jill Gallagher, who came from the Victorian peak body of ha Aboriginal Health Services. And these actually, they're actually re my relations too. So they were the ones who were given the task of pushing this down on us. Well, they couldn't do it because they knew that they were, you know. Mm. And so when, when the vote came, we had our 10 that, that we wanted. And then we were told that the facilitators were going too. And then after that, we thought, okay, we're, we're happy with that. And then we hear the next day that they selected another 10. We don't know who selected them, but another 10 of people and they got selected as well. And they were people who actually, some of those people actually, well they did, run, they were nominate, they nominated, you know, through that process of nominating themselves and saying why they should go. So they selected 10 out of the ones who didn't get voted. So we thought, oh, we're not happy with that. We can see what's, what's you know, we were worried. And um, they weren't very happy with the Victorian dialogue or whatever it was called of course and um, you know they were just um... then I came up here Ruth as you know for Anzac Day and that's when I someone came up to you or Lydia and said that they're gonna get Lydia at that Uluru meeting and you know I and I actually said that in the group that we were you know, louder in the group because I, someone was threatening you know we needed to know I didn't want to send my see my daughter go into a situation where she was being threatened. These fellas went to 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 Yulara. I call it the Yulara statement or the Yulara meeting. And then um, so so that's what happened at our meeting. And um, those people who rep, who were who stood up there from those from the from the native title bodies, the rep body and the health services, we're now asking, where was that on your agenda? Where, tell us, show us on your agenda, and what, where was the meeting that you had to discuss that with us? Because we never heard about that through any of those other processes. So we're asking those, we're asking our local health services to, um, you know, so where was that on their agenda, and where did they discuss that? Because where did you people who were going off representing us get that mandate to go there and say, because they went to they went to Uluru and said, Victoria says yes. Well, every meeting that we had, and the final meeting in Melbourne was, was no, no, no. And then these, these fellas went there, Jeff, um, jo, um, Jeremy Clark and Jill Gallagher went there and said, Victoria votes yes. Mm -hmm. So now we're, we're questioning them right now throughout the state of where did you get the mandate? We're actually calling the health services to account Good one. and we're calling the native title bodies to account. Where did you get that mandate? Arnie, hadn't you already had a meeting of 500 people who said no recognition and we yeah. want to do a treaty and then the Victorian government announced that they're going to do a treaty process because that 500 for Victoria who were community reps, yeah. um, you know, really they... They had more than the numbers at, at Uluru. There's only 300 at Uluru and most of them were staff. Yeah, well, there's 500 black fellas who said no throughout that process because, as you know, the state... Because only the state government are talking treaty with us after 50,000 people marched in Melbourne. They didn't want to talk treaty to us before that. So now they're throwing treaty... Well, you know, the treaty thing is just ridiculous. And we're saying we want an internationally scrutinised treaty. Yep. We want to no, know an internationally scrutinised sovereign treaty. Yep. And what we're looking at doing in Victoria is setting up. And you know this old fella in this white van over there. We followed his line for a long, long time. And we believe, and we're working on establishing sacred treaty circles that incorporate elders, that are elders council, men's business, women's business, such through the sacred treaty circle process. There's already there's documentation on that. And I would I've got my actually I've got that this is my this is what I'm looking at. And the first page is talking about how to set up sacred treaty circles. It's what we've been talking about 
what we relate to, about how mm. we want to go, because it's not about any individual, it's not about any stronger mob than the others, it's go, we're talking about a clan-based treaty. Mm. <coughs> we want to take it back down to clans, and the old fella over here said about, we've got to fix this up on our family level. Because otherwise, what's the point of it all? Mm. We're seeing what's happening in our communities with our kids, our elders, our sick, all of that. We know all of that. How do we, how do, we do that? It's, you know, we worry <coughs> about ice, a lot of us. You know, I believe we, ice is cured by culture. The ice problem, we can cure ice with culture, you know? And I've seen some of my own nephews get fixed that way. So we need to look at a frame. We're, we're actually going back and looking at this stuff because we're sick of the arguments. We're sick of blueing with each other and we've had some pretty mighty blues too. And, and so younger people now, we're having a treaty march in um, Lake Entrance, NAIDOC week. So you've got to take it back down to your home and your family and your clan groups and then you start learning what we've got been denied from genocide. Mm. We've been, our culture's been smashed, but we can fix it. Mm. So it's taken us back down to that level that, because um, we're tired of these fellas selling us out. We're tired of them. We don't even, we're sick of them. They're shame now. They can't even walk past us in the street now. Because it's not just a couple of us marching down the streets. There's lots of us. And there's a lot of our young people now who want to come on board.